Melee Hunter's been kinda nuts in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery, and since the latest round of class changes are completely silent on the topic, we can assume it's here to stay at least a little while longer. Let's start with a quick overview of runes, talents, and gear. There's two main build paths for Melee Hunter, a pet-focused beast mastery route, and an all-in lone wolf deep survival route. In PvE, the deep survival option is winning in Sims and on napkin math, but BM is actually doing well with current pre bis gear. In PvP, however, the main issue with Beast Mastery, despite pets doing insane damage right now, is that you're putting a lot of eggs into a very fragile basket. Bestial Wrath does give your pet CC immunity, but whenever it's on cooldown, you're very vulnerable to just one poly or fear or whatever. The stun is nice, and it's certainly not bad to have, but again, it's pet reliant. Almost every talent point in this tree goes to juicing your pet out, and I find that's just too unreliable in the current meta especially. Yes, if someone lets you and your pet wail on them, they will die, but I think we can do better than that. Survival is chock full of useful PvP abilities that make you stronger and downplay the importance of your pet significantly. Raw stamina, a defensive cooldown like deterrence, some hit chance and CC resistance, better traps, all of it is awesome for PvP. In fact, survival has so many good things that you have to make some hard personal choices. You don't have enough points for all the CC improvements, so you could, say, add or drop points in an improved wing clip for some combination of entrapment and clever traps, or vice versa. It's pretty fluid. I personally lean toward valuing wing clip because of its versatility. You can use it to catch flag carriers, enemy melee, and even sometimes ranged if you can connect on them. Whereas traps, while fantastic, need a bit of setup or feign death to pull off, and they usually do their job well enough anyway while unimproved. You can tinker around with this and move point values around based on your playstyle and what you use most and find the most success with. But make sure you're always getting your actives. Deterrence, Counter Attack, and Wyvern Sting are all fantastic. As for runes, there's not a lot of wiggle room here. Your entire right side is pretty much spoken for. For Melee Hunter to really work, you need full melee runes. Dual Wield and Melee Specialist are both mandatory for max damage, and the other spots are just kind of a best of the worst situation. Only on your chest do you really have to make a choice. You can either compromise on the build and run a pet with Heart of the Lion, or you can go all in with Lone Wolf. Again, sacrificing your pet may seem a bit troll in PvP since it can keep rogues from re-stealthing, harass healers, defend flags while you're sapped, whatever, but I kind of think it just doesn't matter right now. Phase 2 PvP is pretty much burst or be bursted, and Lone Wolf plays into that meta perfectly. If you do run a pet despite this, then you could potentially take Beast Mastery over Carve, but otherwise, these runes are stock standard. Finally, for gear, we pretty much just run whatever good agility, strength, and attack power pieces we can wear, but obviously weapons are worth a mention. For pre bis you should be running your Warsong or Silverwing PvP sword in the main hand, and your Razorfen Downs quest reward in the offhand. Both weapons are easy to get and outclass other options until you get Nomorgon loot, specifically the dual fist weapons. Because of how dual wield specialization works, we have to have the same weapon type in both hands. Orcs looking to cash in on their racial can consider these axes, but with one being a BOE drop, it's a bit harder to get, and you're fine just running the swords. For your bow, the STV epic is best since this effect procs on your melee attacks. As a ranged weapon, it's pretty much a plastic toy, but the proc makes it the best glorified stat stick available. If you want some sweaty optimization, you could also carry around a proper ranged weapon, such as the Nomer Gun or your Warsong Faction Rep Bow, and macro swap to them when rooted or running someone down or kiting, whatever. Again, not strictly necessary, but it's nice to have options. Okay, with all that said, let's go over some general gameplay now. First and four, we have to address the elephant. Vanilla Hunter sucks at being a real melee class. Modern retail survival has tons of tools to thrive in full melee, but 2004 Hunter was not designed with any of that in mind. We have no gap closer, no kick, few real defensive cooldowns besides deterrence, and all our best CC breaks immediately on damage, unlike, say, Kidney Shot or Intercept. Despite all of that, the spec rips shit up, and not just because of damage numbers, Although our core DPS loop of smashing raptor strike and flanking strike and hoping for resets will erase people from the map. Instead, we have a kind of wish.com rogue playstyle, where we have a lot of burst damage and tools to control a fight, and we really thrive in multi-target scenarios because of it. 
But like rogues, we also get absolutely popped if we overcommit out in the open, so don't be afraid to actually be a hunter now and then and pluck off multi-shots and stings while looking for opportunities to close into melee. Hunter in general really thrives in defensive positions. We're pretty much Valorant Sentinels. Don't feel useless if you're hanging back a bit, just look for ways to contribute with utility. Drop traps and flares for your flag carrier, wing clip melee off your healers, drop flares on rogues so they can't vanish, whatever. Wyvern Sting in particular is a phenomenal and very versatile ability, and another reason I stand survival. You can open with it to run up and manually close the gap on a target, sleep a second enemy or a pet, or even just take advantage of the pretty decent dot it has by throwing it on a kill target before you start wailing on them. While the Sting can't be used in combat, you can always pair it with Feign Death. You can do this to control enemy healers or peel your own, or just to buy time for yourself in a 1vx. Also a note here, because we don't have Trap Launcher in this build, we can also feign for traps like this. A final good use for feign is as a sort of interrupt. If someone's hardcasting CC or big damage at you, feign 80 or 90% through the cast and it'll drop their target and interrupt it. Lastly, I really recommend you get comfortable with your good aspects. Monkey is the default for melee because it provides the only tangible combat benefit, but you can micro swap to Cheetah to close small gaps if someone is CC'd or hard casting or otherwise can't daze you, while Pack is great for escorting flag carriers and getting your party through indoor spaces. Just remember to take it off before a fight starts. Most of Melee Hunter's survivability comes from dodge and parry, and these two things only work if you're facing your target. If you're fighting multiple melee enemies, do not give them your back. Shimmying around with strafes to keep enemies in front of you will make you look ridiculous, but dramatically improve your odds of survival, especially if you have deterrence rolling. Viper Sting is pretty incredible for PvP and a massive annoyance for classes that can't clear it. Take Viper Pot Shots at the backline in a fight. Even if they can cleanse it, it still takes mana and globals. Mages are really susceptible to this ability, and if a druid isn't good about abolishing poison, you can quickly oom um them and prevent them from power shifting out of your slows and roots. Along those lines, remember that Scare Beast works on not only hunter pets, but shapeshifted druids and ghost wolfed shamans. Good players will shift out of this if they see it coming. Even if they do shift to dodge it, it wastes mana and, in the case of shaman, a lot of time. I also couldn't really make a guide about vanilla PvP without at least mentioning consumables and items. With the launch of Phase 2 especially, we're entering the thick of things. Items like Nifty Stopwatch and Skull of Impending Doom are now available. Skull especially is a great item more so because it deals damage to you. The valleys are a little harsh in Phase 2, but that damage can help us break out of sheeps and blinds and whatever if we see the CC coming and pop Skull in time. At the very least, you should consider investing in first aid for bandages and then engineering for tools like stun grenades, which can be used as a poor man's kick to stun casters in your dead zone or to peel melee off yourself. This stuff, however, is kind of a bottomless well of discussion and not strictly related to melee hunter, so we'll leave it here. I hope something in this quick guide helped you. It's honest work one-shotting mages trying to enjoy the game, so have fun out there. This mage has no idea what's about to happen to him. Haha. <laughs> Stupid class. Uh -huh.